If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. In order to answer this question, what we want to do is successively redraw the circuit until we can get it down to a circuit with just one resistor. Easier said than done, but for example, if you look at this resistor right here and this one right here, what you want to do is ask yourself, are those resistors in parallel or are they in series? And hopefully you can see that these two resistors happen to be in series with one another. And we know that when resistors are in series, we can calculate their equivalent resistance simply by adding the individual resistances together. So in this case, we've circled R2 and R3, so that means we can actually adjust our equation so that it also says R2 and R3. And all we have to do is add them together. So we're going to take 2R and add that to 4R, which of course gives us 6R. So that is the equivalent resistance of the two resistors that we just circled. We'll go ahead and redraw the circuit so that those two have been combined. So here is that 6R resistor that we just determined. We will next note that this resistor and this resistor are in parallel with one another. And when resistors are in parallel, we have to use this equation in order to calculate their equivalent resistance. So we'll have one over R4 plus one over the 6R resistor. Note that R4 is equal to 3R, so we can actually fill that in right here. And in order to add these fractions, we would have to find a common denominator. So we would have to multiply this denominator by two as well as the numerator. So this will become two over 6R. We can then add these two fractions together to make three over six R. And then there's a little trick here we can do. We can flip both sides of this equation upside down. So that would give us R E Q over one, which is just R E Q. And then we'll have six R over three. And then of course six divided by three is two. So this can reduce to two R. So we'll go ahead and combine these two resistors into a single resistor whose resistance is two R. And then finally, we can combine these two resistors, which are in series again with one another, and that means we can just add their resistances. So we'll add 1R plus 2R to make 3R, and we'll redraw the circuit. So now that we've simplified the circuit, we can apply Ohm's law, and Ohm's law tells us that the potential difference is equal to the current multiplied by the overall resistance. Now, the potential difference produced by the battery in this case is just symbolized by epsilon. The current is symbolized by I, and then the resistance is 3R, so we'd actually multiply this by 3R. And cleaning that up just a little bit, we can see that epsilon is equal to 3IR. Now that we have that result, we're going to move backwards from the simplified circuit all the way back to the original, more complex circuit. And when we do that, we have to follow the following rules. As we move backwards, we're going to bring current with us if we are moving backwards to a series arrangement. However, if we are moving backwards to a parallel arrangement, we're going to bring with us the volts. For example, if we go back to this circuit and we work our way backwards, we can see that we're traveling from this resistor backwards to these two right here. Now those two are in series, so according to the rule, we're going to have to bring the current with us. And since the current was indicated by I, that means the current here will be I and the current here also will be I. Notice that for these two resistors, we have both the current and the resistance value, but we don't have the volts. According to Ohm's law, the volts is simply the product of the current and the resistance. So what we'll do is multiply the currents and the resistances to get the volts. So for example, this current times this resistance would give us a volts equal to two IR. And over here, this current times this resistance would give us a volts of IR. We will next move backwards from this resistor to these two right here, because this resistor came from those two. And we'll notice that these two resistors are in parallel with one another. And if we are moving backwards to parallel, we're going to bring with us the volts. So that means the volts of 2IR is going to carry with us as we move backwards. So the volts here will be 2 IR, and the volts here also will be 2 IR. This resistor, when we move backwards, is still the same. So the volts will carry with us, as will the current that is marked as I. Now, we don't have the currents for these two resistors right here. But going back to Ohm's law, if we divide both sides of this equation by R, we can see that the current is equal to delta V over R. So what we'll do is we'll take the volts and divide by the resistance. If we divide 2IR by 6R, we would get a value of 1 third I. 
and then if we divide 2ir by 3r, we would get a value of 2 thirds i. And finally, we're going to move backwards from this resistor to these two, because it was these two resistors that combined to make this resistor right here. We're moving backwards to a series arrangement of resistors. So once again, when we move backwards to series, we bring with us the current. So this one third I is going to be placed on this resistor right here, as well as this resistor right here. Now what we need is the volts for both of those resistors. Well, one more time, volts is equal to current times resistance. So if we multiply one third I by the resistance of 2R, then we're going to end up with 2 thirds IR. And then down here, if we multiply the current of 1 third R by 4R, then we're going to end up with a volts of 4 thirds IR. Now, to clean this up just a little bit, we have to note that the question wants the volts in terms of epsilon, and we don't have that right now. All of our volts are in terms of IR. You can see IR is present in all of the volts that we've calculated so far. Well, we go back to this result right here, and we can solve this for IR. If we divide both sides by 3, we would have epsilon over 3 is equal to IR. So everywhere we see IR, we're going to replace those IR terms with epsilon over 3. So let's go ahead and do that for all of the IR terms. So we've made that substitution for all the IRs. We can simplify a couple of these here. So this will become 2 epsilon over 9. This will become 4 epsilon over 9, 2 epsilon over 3 here as well as there. And we'll notice that we have solved part A of the question. The potential difference on this resistor is 4 epsilon over 9. On this resistor, the same. The resistor in the middle is 2 epsilon over 3, and then this resistor right here is epsilon over 3. So part A is solved. Indeed, we have solved part B as well, because we wanted the currents in terms of I. Well, the current on this resistor was just I. It's marked right there. The current on this resistor is 1 third I. The current on this resistor also is 1 third I. And then the current in the middle resistor is 2 thirds I. So the question is now complete.